Hey dudes, today I'm gonna to show you three different ways to automate EQ in your Pro Tools session. So let's jump right into it. All right, so let's add a EQ to our track right here. Now, if we are in read mode and I change anything with the EQ, let's say I engage a high pass filter and change the Q or slope to be really strong and go my 110K rule, type in K, enter, and change that slope to just set a general high pass and low pass filter. Remember, this is always a good idea when you're doing dialogue because there isn't dialogue in very low or very high frequencies. So this is fine. We can set up the whole track this way. This will get us going generally. But if we listen to the example, all right, I'm gonna talk like this. And then I'm gonna to dip to a little bit more bass. Okay, so you hear that, you know, probably I'm gonna leave this and leave this alone, but I want to automate the EQ so that just during this section in particular, we're gonna make an adjustment to the EQ. So before you do any automation, of course, you need to go to whatever track or tracks you are working on, go to automation mode selector and pick what you want. I'm gonna always encourage that you use touch. That is usually all I need to do. You will see your plugin has now turned red with all of these lights, like it's ready to go. Another thing to double check is that your plugin itself is automatable by clicking that auto button and making sure everything is on the right side. Assuming you're good to go with that, we will do method number one right now. So I have different EQ rules. One is my 5K and 250. The 5K being like adding a removal of robust or bass in voice and, or anything really, but we're talking about voice. And 5K is what's gonna be the bright zone. Some people like to use that 2K number or some value there, but those are the two different sides, 250 or 5K is gonna be how we control this. So in this example, and then I'm gonna dip to a little bit more bassy. We just want to remove bass. We always wanna to try to remove EQ first and that will then uh, correct the problem. So all I'm gonna do is back myself up here with the playhead. Uh, I got my 250, my 5K, for example, in low mid filter and high mid filter, and I already have high pass and low pass. So really all I'm gonna do is just try to reduce at 250 at the right time. So remember reduction will happen with gain. Uh, so I'll just go to a minus number. So I'm gonna hit play, and then I'm gonna click and drag this down, and then I'm going to let go since I'm in touch mode, and it will go back to its resting place. So let's try that out. All right, I'm gonna talk like this. And then I'm gonna to dip to a little bit more bassy. And then finish talking like this. Cool. That's it for method number one. All right, for method number two, we're gonna to go to the bottom left of the track you wanna work on to show your automation lanes. And right now it's set to volume. But if you go to the seven band EQ. A really cool thing in Pro Tools is it will always turn yellow if you have automated something. So this is method number two as we open the automation lanes and then here are all of the automatable parameters in the plugin. It can look a little bit overwhelming but maybe what you might wanna do is at least get it started with method number one which is just clicking and dragging in touch mode and then look, it turns yellow and I can click on it. And there we go, there is everything that I did. So let's say we were just doing this from scratch. Anytime I am working with automation or talking about it with anybody else, I recommend that you hold command to get your little plus sign fingy and set an in and an out marker so that you don't accidentally go like that or something and ruin the whole rest of the track. Now, if I were to just Boom, like that, I can undo. Or remember, you can always hit Option and your minus sign fingy will come up and you can remove any of these dots that you create. So let's say I just wanted to 
only do method number two. Uh, let's say I get the selector tool like this and just delete any of those previous dots that I created. I could just do something like this and then hover above my selection after I've made a selection with the selector tool. And let's go down nine this time. Remember, you can always hit Command. So I'll show you that with the keyboard in a second. If you hold Command while you're going up and down and dragging, it helps you get to a specific spot a little bit more precise. I will just delete this real quick. And I'll show you again how I did this by holding Command. So I click and I start to drag. I get it to about the place I need to. So 8.6 is pretty close. And I simply just hold Command. And now that lets me go like, you know, 0.1 at a time, very precise to get to nine. Uh, while we're at it, let's just even this out so it doesn't just hop on or drop off a cliff. So I am doing plus sign fingy to add a couple of dots and minus sign fingy to just make a nice little ramp. That's all. So now it'll nice and smoothly go up and down so we can watch that. So if I hit play back here, all right, I'm going to talk like this. And then I'm going to dip to a little bit more bassy. And then finish talking like this. So there you go. You can use method number two on your own where you're individually drawing these dots on the volume automation lane. Or you can always check your work. So you can try and touch automation first and then always clean anything up by going to the automation lanes. Okay, with method number three, you're gonna have to have an automation mode called preview mode. So if we go to window, automation, or hit command and the number four on the number pad, it will bring up this window, which will allow me to click preview mode. I have a whole nother video describing how to do this, so I'm just gonna quickly show you that this is the third method pop it into preview mode while I'm in touch, change whatever parameter I need to. So let's say minus nine gain at 250 of the low mid filter. You will notice that our touch automation has turned green, which means nothing has been printed yet, but I can simply just make a selection in and out where I want my change that I created to happen go back up to this automation window and write automation to selection. It will tell me that we're all good and it will show me that we're all good here, that I have made that exact change. So again, you can mix and match methods here where maybe I just wanna clean it up here to make it a little bit more smooth like that or you can just leave it how it was if it's not bothering you and you don't hear any change in automation. But there you go, that's method number three, which is using preview mode. So remember, you can apply this to however many parameters you want. So you can just keep doing pass after pass after pass. We just did one simple move with the low mid filter, but you know, let's do one more thing for fun. Let's do a low pass filter as I'm talking. Um, I'm going to show you also you can click and drag these dots as opposed to these knobs so they all work. All right, I'm going to talk like this. And then I'm going to dip to a little bit more bassy. And then finish talking like this. So you can see that over time, I was able to click and drag something in automation mode. And then again, just one more reminder, we're in the low mid band gain. So I can hit the plus sign, for example, and bring up a new automation lane and find, oh, there's my low pass frequency. It is already turned yellow again because there is automation available. Um, but I'll just show you that like, yeah, you could do more than one thing at once basically, so there you go. So I'll click both of these together and you can watch it. All right, I'm gonna talk like this. And then I'm gonna dip to a little bit more bassy. And then finish talking like this. So there you go. All right, that's it. That's three different ways to automate EQ in Pro Tools. 
Keep in mind, this is a very important technique to use when you want to automate a small section of a track and not the entire track. If you want the entire track to have the same EQ, you don't need to use automation, but this is a great trick to just change one small section of a track and it really helps keep your sessions nice and neat. Now you don't have to have dedicated track one, two, three, four, five with specific EQs on it. You just change the EQ anytime you wanna change it within a track. And as long as you have the space to do it, you're good to go. So I hope this helps you in your future projects and you have fun with EQ automation. And until next time, later dudes.